the industrial equipment industry is undergoing a revolution. The purely transactional business of the past is being replaced by a service-based model. Machine reliability becomes very important to avoid loss of service revenues due to downtime. Think about the consequence of downtime of farm equipment, where an entire crop can be wasted if not harvested on schedule. At the same time, customers are looking for products that can perform ever more complex and smart functions. This means that equipment manufacturers must design and verify a wide variety of products meeting the short delivery schedule with minimum cost. CADZO provides us with technological solutions for the design, analysis, and management of our equipment. The SOLIDWORKS portfolio helps us to conceptualize, create, validate, locate, manage, and transform our innovative ideas into excellent product design for the manufacturing of mining drilling equipment. Expensive physical tests and field failures can be minimized by leveraging the power of structural simulation roles within the 3D Experience Works portfolio, leading to faster time to market. Embedded in the cloud-based 3D Experience platform, the Structural Designer role enables users to quickly assess stresses and displacements for various load cases on individual parts and large complex assemblies alike. Engineers at Resmine can quickly set up linear static simulations directly on native SOLIDWORKS CAD geometry of this boom assembly with minimal interaction. Additionally, the Durability and Mechanics Engineer role allows engineers to assess structural reliability for fatigue failures. Engineering managers at Resmine can take advantage of lightweight visualization and collaboration capabilities on the 3D Experience platform to review the latest CAD and simulation data, guide improvements, and approve final revision. We've been using SOLIDWORKS to develop products for more than 10 years. This has enhanced our capabilities in designing machines and marketing them with a more collaborative environment in the company. In that time, we've gone from manufacturing three to four machines a year to more than 130. The Structural Mechanics Engineer role brings advanced non-linear static analysis capabilities for designers using SOLIDWORKS to reduce elastomer residual stresses in industrial equipment components like rubber bushings and seals. In the case of this rubber bushing, alloy steel material is applied to the outer ring and the inner hub. A hyperelastic material is applied to the rubber part of the bushing. Multiple material behaviors can be combined together such as elastic, plastic, thermal, and thermal structural expansion capabilities to capture the physics scenarios experienced by these components during the manufacturing and testing stages. Powerful restart capability allows users to choose results from a previously performed analysis as a starting point for a new analysis case. Results from two or more simulation scenarios can be compared side by side. Here, the designer is visually comparing field plots for displacements, stresses, and XY plots for force versus displacement stiffness response between the two rubber bushing designs. Let's take a look at another example. OMAX is a water jet cutting machine manufacturer. Their abrasive water jet machines experience low and high frequency vibrations during operation, which could lead to breakdown. Automated FEM capability, offered by the Structural Performance Engineer role, enables users to focus more on engineering by automating redundant and unproductive tasks, such as mesh definition for every single part. The Contributing Shapes Manager works in conjunction with automated FEM to include and exclude components. The Contributing FEMs Manager helps to reference and reuse an existing mesh from a component level into the main assembly. The Advanced Implicit Dynamic Simulation capability helps engineers ensure the dynamic stresses are small and within linear range, while the tooltip displaces in a circular path. Insightful animations and engineering quantities can be superimposed for visualizing instant responses, as well as ensuring expected behaviors of the assembly, which is critical in achieving manufacturing precision. Key stakeholders at OMAX can easily review structural performance data on a web browser and seamlessly collaborate within the fully connected environment of the 3D Experience platform. 
This digital continuity not only breaks silos, but also increases productivity significantly, thereby reducing design cycle times. With Simulia's structural simulation roles included in the 3D Experience Works portfolio on the cloud, you can reduce prototyping and warranty costs, enhance brand value and product portfolio, and accelerate innovation and time to market. Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, it is almost uh, 11 a.m. We will get started in just a minute or so. Uh, we have more folks uh, coming online. Uh, we definitely appreciate your time, and uh, we'll, we'll get started in just about a minute or two. Thanks. Give them the 60 second bell, Dana. Okay. All right. Sounds good. So, uh, well, I guess we can go ahead and get started if that works. I still see people coming on board. Um, so, but we'll, we'll get going uh, uh, since it is straight up 11 a.m. So, good morning, everybody. I'm Dana Parrish. I am the Senior Customer Success Manager for uh, Dassault Systems SolidWorks. And I'm joined today by um, my esteemed colleagues, Ramesh Lakshmapathy and also Robbie Hoyler uh, from our partner, uh, TPM. And we're glad you could come out. We're glad you could be here with us and learn about some of our advanced, uh, what I call next generation SIM tools and how they can be used to design better industrial equipment. And for you folks in the audience, if you're not exactly designing better industrial equipment, which I will define in a moment, it's still, it's still the opportunity to take a look at these, at these tools and how they work. Uh, they are really, really good stuff. Um, we do have a questions uh, field in the GoToWebinar app, so if you do have questions, please uh, ask them as we go along. Some of them I will I will be on, Robbie and I will be in the background, we'll be able to answer uh, very quickly. Uh, some of them we may save for the end as they may have a much more broader appeal to the rest of the folks uh, that are here uh, uh, learning about the tools and watching. So let's talk about what do we mean by industrial equipment? What does that, what does that industry look like? Um, it can mean a lot of things. Um, when we talk industrial equipment, we, we're talking large uh, earth, earth moving type equipment, you know, your, your Caterpillars, your John Deere's, your, you know, those type of things, Kubota. It can also mean process type equipment that's going to do something maybe chemically or physically to process something from point A to point B. It can be machine tools. It can be, it can also be uh, uh, equipment that also builds things and creates things as well. And within that equipment, you have all the all the sub all the sub uh, pieces, bearings and bushings and and you know bra brackets and braces and everything related into the successful building and and um, performance of this industrial equipment. So that so today in the context, you're going to see different examples of that. And I'm going to talk about some industry challenges as well that that face this industry. First off, we want to talk about the durability. We, you know, as as an industrial equipment designer and engineer, you want to make this as durable as possible because the more durable it is, the less cost it is to to fix or to do some sort of field repair. As well as looking at emerging markets, we have a lot of emerging markets out there. Um, I'll use as an example, India is a big emerging market, and there's opportunity there, right? But there's competition too. So how do you how do you exploit that opportunity? at the same time being able to effectively compete with others. And the final piece is what we call mass production and mass customization. How do you balance that? How, do you, how, do you, how are you still able to mass produce different, different uh, pieces of industrial equipment or components for them? As well as you have, we're seeing customers today wanting more customized uh, pieces of equipment, things that, uh, things that just appeal to them. You know, today you can go online and order order a car or some or some piece of you know something out there that benefits you certain color certain style certain texture certain pattern and you know you have the opportunity to mass customization so how do you in in the in the context of this uh, do in the context of industrial equipment have be able to uh, balance the production and, and um, mass customization trends we're seeing today 
so the industrial equipment, machinery, what have you, they have to adapt to different use cases. There's so many different products and things being created and thought about and engineered. How can you adapt these machines to do different tasks and create different things? How do you make them smarter? How do you, how do you make them smarter? Maybe they, they can self-diagnose a problem. Maybe, maybe, you can, maybe you can make it uh, you know, communicate with other machines and, or, or with the user and make it flexible. And, and also at the same time, making it a differentiator against your competition as well as trying to increase the product portfolio. Uh, you know, building one or two pieces of equipment might have been fine several years ago, but now you want to have a, a strong and, and broad-based portfolio to cover all these different, different aspects when I, when I go back and dovetail to mass production versus mass customization. So let's talk about the building blocks, our, our simulation portfolio. Today, we're going to focus on the structures piece and then touch a little bit on some of the others. But Know that within the simulation realm of the simulation universe, you have you have simulation for structures, you have multi-body simulation, which is uh, for for maybe automotive and aerospace applications. You have uh, durability, which we also call fatigue, as well as uh, uh, acoustics. We go into electromagnetics, fluids, automation, and optimization. These eight building blocks are kind of what what lay out our simulation portfolio. And you'll, you're going to see, uh, you're, we're definitely going to talk about the structures piece of it today, but we're also going to touch a little bit on the electromagnetics and fluids. But know that we do have a full, uh, full simulation portfolio that, that's out there. So here's our, here's our agenda for today. I'm going to turn it over to Ramesh in just a second. He's going to go take an example, um, a real customer example. Uh, you, if you were here early, you saw the Resiman, uh, uh, the Resiman video, one of our customers are down in Peru. And we're actually going to use uh, some of their some of their models. So this is a real world customer, real world model to find the best design. And then we're going to look at some structural integrity. How do we how do we determine what structural integrity is? How do we account for that? How do we simulate that? And then Ramesh is then going to go in some advanced uh, analysis as well. Uh, some of the things that are important for the industrial equipment uh, industry on the advanced side. I'm going to come back at that point and talk about some of the other physics. I mentioned some of them early in our, our simulation building blocks. And then we're going to do wrap up uh, next steps QA. Uh, and again, throughout this, this is your opportunity to ask questions. Please ask them. And again, if they're quickie, uh, you know, stuff that I can, I'll answer very quickly or Robbie will. And then uh, some, of the more, uh, some of the more compelling questions we will save towards the end if they do pop up. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Ramesh. And again, thanks everybody for coming out. Thanks, Dana. Can you can you hear me okay? Perfectly. Well, good morning, everyone, and and thanks for joining us today. So I'm going to uh, uh, talk a little bit about you know the simulation, the design and simulation, and how in the realm of you know being able to use SolidWorks and the 3D Experience platform for your structural simulation how that is still the same as as what you might be used to doing uh, on your desktop uh, uh, environment so like like you know, when it comes to a SolidWorks user the, the biggest thing that we want to all accomplish is of course we're designing in SolidWorks but we want to make sure the performance of the design is intact right is it going to work as expected uh, is it going to uh, behave as expected uh, is it the best design, right? So finding the best design has always been at the heart of every SOLIDWORKS user uh, who's using you know, SOLIDWORKS simulation, for example. So let's see how the 3 Experience platform helps to accomplish the same aspect of things uh, by, you know, through the Abacus technology. So we're going to take a look at uh, Resumen. Resumen is a SOLIDWORKS customer and and they're a top uh, international manufacturer based out of lima peru and and what they do is they make underground drilling machinery and related equipment uh, that provides a more cost effective alternative to the use of traditional drilling rigs and so for this uh, uh, for this first section of the demonstration i'll be using a sub-assembly part from the leading mining equipment that you see here uh, it's called the bolter 77 d model and I'm just going to go ahead and analyze a portion of that assembly, right? So again, keep in mind with, when you're using simulation tools, right? Does it make sense to and take the entire uh, assembly as shown here and analyze it, right? 
but that's not how you can be successful in simulation right you want to actually focus a start uh, kind of you know do you approach like a in a systematic way, a crawl, walk, and run approach, as I call it. So here we'll actually focus on on this uh, bracket assembly, the boom bracket assembly, which takes on uh, the loading. And and let's say this is a critical part. And if this part fails, it means failure of the entire system. So with simulation, we want to hone in, focus on the critical parts of our assembly, and make sure that those those parts. Uh, critical components are going to behave work as expected and that will give us a lot more confidence in terms of you know rolling this out to manufacturing uh, so if you look at this bracket uh, the bracket actually is this entire assembly is uh, is comprised of a knuckle joint sub assembly which let's say a designer level uh, 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 focus involving basic simulations, design iterations, and the, so the designer who's in charge of this knuckle joint design does the design pro work, but also will uh, end up doing some very basic, very simple simulations like linear static analysis, and 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 also being able to hone in on the best design. Okay, can I is design A better than design B, is, or is, is design C better? So that's the role of the designer, right? And then we'll actually hand that off to uh, the uh, the analyst or engineer level whose focus is going to be to take this uh, knuckle joint and put it in the context of the entire assembly or system to do a more comprehensive simulation or more com advanced simulation so that's what we are we will we, see in the next few uh, minutes is how this entire process works so when it comes to designer level simulation how do we get started well it's the same uh, familiar solvex uh, desktop that where you see this bracket assembly and you see half this assembly right because in simulation we can take advantage of symmetry in the geometry loads and boundary conditions and really what we're doing here is we are actually going to first push this bracket assembly uh, into a, a cloud work folder so this is where the 3d experience platform comes in so all we're doing is we are saving the solidworks files and also converting them uh, to be saved on in the cloud space a working directory and so that now we can use that uh, working directly, pull the SOLIDWORKS files from there to do our simulations on the cloud. All right. So basically, that's the process. The very first step of this uh, of this uh, workflow is pushing a geometry into the 3D experience platform to be able to um, so that you, that geometry is not only accessible by simulation but by other applications that you might also have access to. So I'm just going to wait for this green. Um, the column uh, to turn green for all the parts and I'm ready, ready to actually go ahead and launch my linear structure validation that's going to allow me to do some linear analysis like linear statics, linear buckling, the uh, thermal analysis and, and frequency analysis. So just let's just give it a few seconds to launch up. So there you go. Um, and so again, even though there are different UIs, uh, you know, SOLIDWORKS is connected with the 3D experience platform through this um, interface that which we're using to push the geometry. So at all times we have a live link so that way uh, in the future we can also make design changes and push those design changes for simulation purposes. So the first step is really to go ahead and specify what type of analysis I want to do on this uh, on this uh, assembly and I'm going to take advantage of the assistant here on the left side, right? So the assistant is a great way to get started in terms of setting up the simulation. So all I'm going to do is specify unique names so I can track the name of the simulation. So let's call it as broom bracket simulation. So that's pretty much done. The next step is just to go ahead and, and specify a mesh and you know, what type of mesh and we can just simply uh, we'll take the default settings, but here I'm checking the adaptive meshing because the program will automatically refine the mesh for uh, because as a designer I don't want to mess around with the mesh settings and see what mesh controls to use but let the program do all that hard work and the, Then what we do is we go ahead and say okay What parts of this bracket am I, am I really interested in analyzing so I can exclude uh, or include parts that I that are relevant. So here you can see that I'm actually getting rid of all the components except for this uh, knuckle joint assembly. So all the gray parts are actually excluded from the simulation. The green ones are the ones that we are going to use for our simulation purposes. And then next we assign materials. So the the program comes built in with a material palette, a library of materials. We can also add our own custom materials. Here I'm just going to go ahead and quickly do a search filter out my list so 
the pro is here you can see there's a laundry list but i'm just going to type in astm so that i get a shorter list and that way i can quickly pick the material i want to use for my simulation i can verify the properties of my uh, of material that i'm going to apply and what's nice is i can apply the same material to all the components of this assembly or i can selectively apply individual materials to each and every part of this assembly so that's basically done. So I'm just looking for a good a green check mark that looks good so far. I can, we can also do contacts where uh, here, for example, I want to treat everything as bonded. And there's a nice built-in tool where it automatically finds in all the touching faces and I can simply uh, grab all those guys and, and say, okay, bond all those touching faces. A very simple operation, very quick as well. Uh, there are also connections. If we have, we can apply bolt connections, rigid connections, spring connections. But in this analysis, we're not going to account for any of those uh, connections. Uh, let's focus on the physics. So first, I'm just going to grab the, the the flat face on these gaskets at the top and bottom, and simply constrain them in the vertical direction, which is the y direction. And then I'm going to apply another constraint, the conical faces. I just want to make sure that they don't move out in the radial direction so those are my uh, constraints or restraints and the last thing i need to do is apply a load different types of loadings can be applied in this case we're just going to go ahead and apply a bearing load and it's a very simple definition grab the faces of interest where you want to apply the bearing load in this case what's really slick is i can orient my coordinate system as required on the go and here my in the x direction i'm just going to apply a 20,000 pound force and there you go so it's a very simple setup super fast, super easy using the assistant. Uh, uh, and the last thing I need to do is simply simulate my uh, analysis. Okay. Now, a couple of things is we can we can simulate uh, the run the problem locally, or we can just say, okay, let's hand it off to the cloud. So there are both uh, architectures available for you to run the simulations. So this is in this example, I, I would probably just use a local machine because it's not a big assembly or complex meshing. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this problem locally. And it just takes a few minutes, a few seconds to, to come back with the results. And so once it does that, we can investigate the results to, to see what uh, is there a way to may, maybe uh, just change the design? Where can we change the design? And then uh, we'll go from there. All right. So uh, let's give it a few more seconds and it should come back. Yep, there you go. Uh, so right at the back, we get access to some key results. So uh, so the, the one misses stress is the default result that you're seeing here. What we can do is real quick, we can just quick uh, do a quick uh, animation to see how it's deforming. Is it bending, twisting, shearing? And so in what direction is that acceptable? And from the graphics area, I can just go ahead and also look at things like displacement, factor safety. Uh, there's a lot of wide variety of visual feedback that we can get from these results. So for example, I can also look at the displacement vectors just to get a much better understanding or maybe the reaction force vector uh, where you know the load is actually getting reacted. So I can get a visual sense of where it is actually getting reacted less, where it is getting reacted more. I can also look at the tension compression areas. Maybe that gives me an idea of uh, is fatigue going to be an issue. So there's a lot of this visual feedback I can use to make decisions right off the bat. So the one thing that we want to do is look at the factor safety. What's the overall strength? It's about a minimum 1.3. So that's the number I'm after. Uh, I can look at you know where the material, uh, where, where are the weakest areas in the material uh, in the in the structure. And uh, so here you can see that the fillet areas, the the rib areas, those are the factor safety is about 6.6. .6. So I, what I'm going to do is just go back into SolidWorks and um, make a quick design change and then propagate those changes back into my simulation environment. So we are right now here back into SOLIDWORKS. All I'm doing is going to, uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and grab some, a couple of dimensions on the knuckle joint. And let's say, for example, uh, this radius, uh, I wanna change that from a 30 millimeter to let's say, uh, maybe about 20 or maybe even less than 10 millimeters. Okay, there you go. And then we're going to grab this flat face, change the thickness of this extrudes from 30 to 20 millimeter. So once I make those design changes, all I have to do is now propagate those changes back into a uh, 3D experience platform. So I'm going to use this 
uh, connecting bridge on the right side, right? Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and grab all the components and simply save uh, the uh, save the uh, changes back into the 3D Experience platform. You know, typically I'm talking about this working folder on the cloud, and uh, I'm just going to give it a, a quick comment. Let's say new baseline based on simulation results, and just save it. So now it's just pushing the changes, only the changes. It's not pushing the entire assembly, right? That's redundant. It's only pushing the changes back into the 3D Experience platform. And I'm going to go ahead and look at, my, uh, basically go back into my simulation environment on the 3D Experience platform. And what's really nice is I can just do uh, what is called as a global refresh to update those changes. And in just a few seconds, you'll see the changes that we did in SOLIDWORKS is automatically propagated here as well. And all I have to do is rerun the simulation. I, you know, the physics of the problem does not, does not change. The mesh automatically updates. So that's the nice the beauty of this is when, when we make these design changes in SOLIDWORKS and push it, the mesh, uh, because we already have a mesh, the mesh is smart enough to adapt to the new geometry. So all I'm doing now is just rerunning the, the same physics on a new design to, to uh, see uh, some critical uh, KPIs like factor safety, right? Uh, if you remember, the initial factor safety was a 1.3, uh, and so we we are obviously the factor safety might come down, but as long as it's a 1.0, I'm I'm okay with it. Let's say, uh, but let's see what the the uh, the effect of chain making those design changes look like. So here I'm looking at a factor safety of 1.07 on the new design. So very quickly we were able to trim and and shave off. Some, uh, some amount of material. So I'm actually happy with this analysis at the designer level. What I'm going to do is may, you know, use the, uh, some tools on the 3D Experience platform to make my uh, analysis available to, let's say, an engineer or an analyst. So here, I'm using some tools to uh, make a duplicate copy. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the, uh, the simulation that I just did and make the simulation available. So let's just do that. Uh, so I'm just dragging, going to go ahead and uh, drag and drop that to my tool uh, here. And it just shows the relationship that, you know, the, the, the simulation is tied to, it has a mesh, it is tied to the actual solid geometry. So I'm just uh, going to go ahead and, and make a copy of those. So, so the, the reason I'm doing this is because I, as a designer, I still want to be able to continue doing some simulations on my knuckle joint, but I'm also making the new knuckle joint uh, available uh, to my analyst or an engineer who can act, but I don't want the engineer or the analyst to mess up my simulation, so that's why I'm actually performing this duplicate operation, as you can see here. The beauty is, even though I might be doing my own simulations on the same geometry or my analyst is doing uh, the simulations on the full geometry, both both simulations are actually tied up to the same SOLIDWORKS uh, model. So that way, any changes that anyone makes on the SOLIDWORKS geometry is propagated not only to the designer level simulation, but also to the analyst level simulation. All right. So once I duplicate and make that, I, I can notify the analyst who will just go ahead and open up that sim duplicated simulation in, in, in a more advanced package on the 3D Experience platform, for example, mechanical scenario creation. All right, so that's pretty much the workflow, and it's, it's a great way to work together, right? It's not just the designer doing his or her, her own stuff uh, and the analyst doing the advanced level simulations, but now we are all collaborating together and using a connected set of tools uh, in a collaborative environment. So that's the beauty of you know using SOLIDWORKS, uh, SOLIDWORKS and the 3D Experience platform for your simulations. All right, so let's see what the designer actually can come up with, uh, sorry, engineer and the analyst level simulation, what that looks like. So for this portion, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, switch live to the software so you can see something that's not gonna be just PowerPoint slides today and videos, but I want to show some of the software live here. Okay. So while this is loading up the results, I want to start off with the results. I'm not going to go through, uh, you know, a start to finish type of, you know, setup for this particular, uh, uh, for this particular part of the demo. 
but I'm just going to show you some key results. So here we have the full, let's say the analyst, as an analyst, as the engineer, I've done the full comprehensive simulation of the bracket assembly, but you can see that I've just analyzed half the assembly, right? A lot of times this is great for simulation purposes, but for documentation, I would like to actually go back and uh, let's say I want to mirror this model. So mirror, mirror the results about the symmetric plane. So let's say, so right off the bat, I can actually get the, uh, the full results on the full assembly and, um, and use that for documentation purposes. So I, I can also go ahead and play a quick animation. You saw, so you saw the designer do that before. And so here, for example, it's loading up all the simulation frames and just a few, in just a few seconds, it should play the animation much more smoothly. So this is a nonlinear static analysis that we are talking about. And so that's why we have time steps. These are not real time, but just pseudo time steps to, to ramp up the loading, right? Uh, and, and so this is, that's why it's a little bit more advanced than, uh, than just doing a linear static analysis at the designer level. So that looks pretty good. I can, you know, so there's a lot of, you know, post-processing operations you can do uh, in terms of being able to uh, look at these visual results. Uh, but one thing I also uh, want uh, as as a engineer analyst is I want to look at engineering data. I want to look at numbers. So for example, uh, let me let me just just do one thing. I'm going to drop this the sky here. Yeah, there you go. So a lot of times, you know, you have these dialog box that might come in the way of your uh, graphics area. So I like to just go ahead and dock everything to one corner of the screen. So all the dialog boxes are just mashed up in that one corner. Uh, so it makes it easier for visualization purposes. So what I want to do is just go back here and I look at some XY plots. So let's go ahead and look at one of the plots of interest. Here we have the bolt connections also models. It's a virtual connector that is connecting the, the, the knuckle joint and the bracket. So we're not making any assumptions. We are simulating a virtual bolt connector to connect these two components. But the purpose of using these uh, bolt connectors could be to visualize what's happening in the bolt connector itself uh, in terms of maybe the axial load or the shear load uh, during the analysis time. So, so that's the one nice thing is I can get more granular information uh, you know, with an advanced analysis where I now, for example, I can understand like, okay, during uh, the, the application uh, where it's the graph is completely linear, it's just the preload of the bolt, but once we apply the bearing load, which is the external load or the structural uh, load in the system, you can see the behavior in the bolt becomes a little bit nonlinear in nature. So I can make all those quick design decisions by looking at or, or get more information about my analysis uh, you know, by doing this type of you know, full comprehensive type of analysis. Uh, a couple of things I would like to point out though uh, is uh, the technology. Okay, so we obviously the Abacus technology is the gold standard of the industry today for doing your structural simulations. Uh, for, for this simulation, for example, uh, one of the nice things uh, is uh, a lot of different virtual connectors that are available. So I use like a, a bolt connector uh, to connect my knuckle joint and my bracket here, but uh, also there is a coupling. Uh, but at the bottom here where my mouse pointer is, you can see uh, the different types of connections from uh, using you know, bolts, pins, tie connections, line fasteners for simul simulating well connections. So the list goes on and on. Uh, so there's a laundry list of connections that, uh, to exactly simulate the type of fastener that you might be using in your assembly to connect to uh, two, more, two or more parts. Uh, the next thing I would like to highlight is the meshing. So you can see that the meshing, for example, uh, this gasket here on the top is actually a hexahedron mesh. Uh, let me just clean this up. I, I think it's superimposing. Uh, the geometry as well. So I'm just going to hide the geometry. There you go. That looks a lot more cleaner. So, so here, for example, I have a hexahedron mesh because it's a, it's a it's a easy way to mesh this type of gasket with hexahedron mesh. And the rest of the assembly, for example, is just tetrahedron. So I can mix and match different types of elements. And as an analyst, as an engineer, I have full control over how exactly I want to mesh my 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 parts in the assembly. And down here, you can see we have beam meshes, quad meshes, tetrahedrons. We have partition hex mesh, sweep mesh. 
voxel mesh and some advanced meshing for you know coating operations or of you doing a whole mesh and and so there's there's a laundry list of options so what i call as bells and whistles for a typical analyst or an engineer wanting to more uh, uh, more control over the meshing options uh, you have that on the 3d experience platform okay. so meshing is one key thing the next thing i want to point out is the material the type of material models to realistically simulate your materials so let's just do a quick um, let's edit this material okay so the mat this is the material dialog box and and uh, there are different multi-physics behavior that you can combine so elastic or hyperelastic uh, plasticity effects foam materials crushable foams nitinol uh, viscoelastic material so there's a lot of different types of material models that you can use uh, on the 3d experience platform to realistically simulate uh, the, the behavior of your material okay um, so a lot of times, for example, recently I did a crushable foam, uh, and and it what you need to do, for example, is input this data. But a lot of times, you know, you might have test data, and we may not actually know how to input the, or populate these fields. So if you have test data, there is a material calibration application as well that you can use to uh, to to uh, uh, let the program automatically come up with the right material model to use and all the material constants to be plugged in. So it's a nice tool also available. It's called the material calibration tool uh, on the 3d experience platform so there are a lot you know so that's basically a material model list okay the other thing i want to point out real quick is when you uh, actually do your contacts okay so think about it like you might be using tools where you might have to uh, you know uh, define your physical interactions or your contacts uh, much uh, in advance to uh, doing your simulations on the 3D experience platform, we have a technology called as, called as generalized contact, which is just an option that you include in your simulation and all the contacts, wherever multiple parts might come into contact with each other during the simulation or the deformation process, the generalized contact will take care of, you know, all those uh, uh, situations uh, appropriately behind the scenes. So basically what I'm saying is, in on the 3d experience platform with the abacus technology you do not have to create any uh, contact pairs uh, and 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 try to do all the guesswork you know which phase might come into contact with it which phase especially think about if you're doing an elastomer compression that compression uh, elastomers can uh, compress in unique ways and the area of contact can con continuously change during the deformation how do you account for all that right by uh, providing an upfront contact definition so here in you know the solver will take care of the generalized contact uh, option to do that automatically for us behind the scenes so that's really cool technology uh, and the last one, of course, you saw was uh, the simulate option, right? So, uh, so you have the option to simulate the problem or solve the problem locally, or you have the option to solve the problem on the cloud. Now, with both local and cloud options, you can run the simulations uh, on four, eight cores, 18 cores, 36 cores, and up to 144 cores. And you have access to memory, which is in the excess of, you know, uh, I would say, about 200 GB plus memory is accessible on the cloud as well. Okay, so if you don't have a machine uh, infrastructure, if you don't have hardware, no worries. You can always take advantage of running your problems using the cloud resources, which is also a HPC resource that, uh, that's available to you for to run your simulations much much faster. So those are some of the technologies I just wanted to kind of bring to the table for you. Hopefully you saw that. Uh, but if you have any questions, again, feel free to type in your questions uh, in the Q&A panel provided in the GoToWebinar window. Right. So let's just go back into the PowerPoint. So we've seen a designer-level simulation, engineer-level simulation, and real. So just to recap what you've seen, right? We started off with this knuckle giant at the designer level, uh, made some design changes, compare the factor of safety. And then the analyst came in and took uh, took the knuckle joint design, put in the context of the full bracket assembly to see how that actually affects the factor safety. 
and uh, and then you know with the with the engineer level or analyst level simulations you can get a lot more information a lot more detail a lot more accuracy and realistic uh, simulation so for example we just looked at what the loads look like on the, the connector between the knuckle joint and and the bracket now you can scale you know i showed you a simple workflow but you can use the same workflow to scale your simulations to let's say a full boom analysis as shown here and answer questions like can the boom sustain maximum working loads of 40,000 pounds are the, plate, uh, the, are the plate reinforcements enough to prevent a local buckle so moving on to the some of the other criterias kpis that people in the industrial equipment industry uh, you might look for is uh, number one is global stability evaluation so when you are looking at an excavator model like the one seen here the key questions that you want to ask uh, and, and get answers to that through a simulation is is the excavator structurally stable is the arm expanded to the maximum length and the bucket is you know max max loaded what if i uh, rotate the upper body through 360 degrees and what if the counterweight is actually in in not a favorable position so you can see here um, this is showing the analysis of the entire boom assembly all right so when it comes to large complex models uh, and, and understanding the dynamic or the maximum stresses in the structure, you can see that we can handle that very well. And in this case, we are actually showcasing how you can address the global stability evaluation criteria. The other ones are could be, you know, are the stresses acceptable in the arms element when it's retracting or expanding at worst case position? So, for example, uh, this is illustrating the entire assembly analysis in the in the boom uh, in the arms. Uh, but you know, a lot of times the critical components could be the one that is actually connecting, uh, let's say, the, the main boom, uh, the bucket, and the main boom arm. So, for example, if I zoom in a little bit closer, uh, not this guy here, but yeah, this is just showing the dis uh, stress levels here. But right over here, this plate that is zoomed in right now, that plate is connecting the bucket and the, uh, the boom main boom arm. So what if that plate actually breaks? So it's important to actually go ahead and analyze you know, how long that plate is probably going to last, right? So in this case, we can do a quick fatigue analysis on the 3D experience platform and look at, you know, compare an initial design and, and make changes and see if we can actually alleviate the stress levels and, and increase the fatigue life of the split component because that's a critical part of the assembly. So not only are you, we can do a static analysis or nonlinear analysis, but now we are extending that to a more complete picture where we are doing a fatigue analysis as well to understand how durable this plate is. All right, so moving on to some advanced structural analysis, uh, there are a lot of international standards, right? So one of the key things in the IE industry while dealing with, you know, heavy mobile equipment is, is the, the, the ROP simulation or what's called as a rollover protection structure simulation. So there are a lot of international standards like the ISO 3164, 10, 262 and a lot of you know companies that actually do lab evaluations of protective structures so for example if you in in the case of resume what they typically what well, how they do it is actually shown in the video on the left side and then so it's basically a crush test of the roof right so we want to evaluate the operators the safety uh, aspect of of a person who might be sitting inside this ca cabin so we're simulating uh, uh, you know, a crush test uh, as per the ISO standards. And on the right side, you're seeing the same simulation done use, uh, using the 3D experience platform. Okay. And and so ROPS is again, you know, and this is just like another example showing a top load and a side loading uh, where you are actually looking at evaluating the how, you know, as you're crushing the structure, how does the force and, and uh, what force is needed to crush the structure and how is the structure actually deforming, you know, elastically as well as, you know, plastically. A plastic, a pl also, it might undergo some permanent uh, plastic deformation. And maybe even, even beyond that, where the, this could be progressive damage, uh, where the structure starts to break apart, we can handle all of that. But basically, the graph here of force versus the displacement gives an idea of the area uh, is, is going to give us uh, the energy absorbed by this structure uh, because of that impact load. 
and is and then being able to compare that energy absorption with inter, uh, any standard standards that uh, yeah, actually calls for verifying or testing this environment so energy absorption is a very key criteria uh, to evaluate and compare that you know if, if that's acceptable as per your testing standards so another example is this uh, is, is, is called the APCO frame. You know, it's a, it's a Solidex customer. So you can see this Wellman frame, uh, and right at the top, maybe it's not that clear from this image, but right at the, at the top there is actually a, a robot system. So this is kind of a, an ex, a, a animation showing how that uh, robot system works. It's, think about it as a pick and place machine, right? So there's a lot of motors operating and those motors can induce vibrations on the Wellman frame. And also there is an electrical cabinet with a lot of key uh, critical components, a lot of electronics, electrical systems, uh, which is actually uh, uh, also situated on the Wellman frame uh, as per, you know, as, as shown here on the picture. So what we're concerned about is, hey, what's the maximum dynamic stresses on the frame because of vibration effects? Is resonance an issue? Uh, is acceleration response and electrical components okay? So it might be critical to understand this type of KPI to make sure that the, the cabinet, the, the electrical component sitting inside the cabinet does not undergo excessive vibration because that's going to cause any uh, some some sort of catastrophic failure of those components. So what we can do on the 3D experience platform is take the development structure, simulate the vibration aspect of it, and, and, and look at visually how the structure is vibrating, and also look at engineering data like such as this XY plot, which is actually showing us the acceleration response of the center of mass of the cabinet. So we're not including the cabinet in the analysis, but we are representing uh, it through a remote location, a remote point, and accounting for the mass and inertia effects of the cabinet as well. But in the end, we are concerned about what's how what's acceleration acceleration response at the center of mass of that cabinet. Another nice a cool example is this overhead rail system, and you typically you see this in factory shop flows, uh, carrying a huge amount of load from one point A to point B. Uh, so we can simulate the load that's being carried, you know, using a remote load operation, a remote load feature and answer some simple questions can you know what if this thing comes to a sudden stop is that going to cause an un undesirable response is that going to actually cause vibrations how does the center of mass shift excessively and what's the overall reacting forces and moments in support locations so th these could be fundamental key fundamental questions where which uh, where simulation can come in and give you answers and and help you out so this is just another uh, uh, animation showing you the, the results of the of this analysis. So again, it's a time, uh, what we call as a time history analysis. We're just simulating the fact that uh, the, 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 the this frame is actually moving at a certain velocity, but then abruptly comes to a halt. And because of that, you know, the induced vibrations, what does that look like? And is that acceptable and so on? So with that, I'm actually done for my portion. I'm going to hand it back to uh, Dana, who's, who's going to talk about a couple of other things and wrap up this uh, webinar for us. Dana? Great. Thanks, Ramesh, and a fantastic job. Uh, some really, really compelling uh, simulations there. And you know, we talked all about structural stuff, but like the uh, old infomercial goes, wait, there's more, right? So let's talk about some of the other things that we have in our next generation of simulation tools I'll touch upon. So we can go to the next slide. Ramesh, if you can pop to the next slide, if you don't mind. We might be having some technical difficulties here. Dana, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm trying to get to the next slide. Oh, sorry. I, I, for some reason, my, my uh, audio settings got changed on Goody Meeting. I apologize for that. Okay. So there you go. The next slide. There okay. Go. So we have, um, we also, within the context of the uh, 3D Experience platform, we also have a product called Fluid Dynamics Engineer, which is, the, which is our CFD tool uh, built inside the 3D Experience platform much like the mechanical aspect that, that you just saw, being able to run on the cloud and to do some uh, very, very good different types of turbulence modeling, uh, different types of meshing, uh, 
everything everything related to a, a very uh, very uh, technical and uh, high end uh, type of fluid simulation. I'm not going to read everything here. You all can read there. But no, we've added a, a, as compared to our flow tool that's on the SolidWorks desktop, we've added more uh, turbulence models. We've also have a near wall modeling type of approach. So where the geometry meets the fluid, it's a lot more accurate. And uh, it, it does some other uh, some other really cool things as well, including some uh, some basic multi-phase flows. So know that we have the fluid dynamics engineer. Here's some uh, here's some examples of what it can do. Uh, you can see I think it's really cool is the wing flutter analysis. We have the free surface flows. The the tube squeeze is pretty neat too, and and also even some electronics cooling. So we have taken uh, some really um, this is built by us. From the ground up and now you have as an engineer designer access to the uh, cores on the cloud to do some of these very high-end type of CFD simulations with our fluid dynamics engineer we also are have a new member of our family uh, the we have an electromagnetics tool called electromagnetics engineer this is based upon the CST set of tools from our sister company uh, the Samuya side of the house at the so systems so historically, we've never really had a solution for customers like yourself who say, gosh, I really want to get in some electromagnetics. I'm trying to understand. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to, for my, for my industrial equipment I'm designing, I need to have it connected to the network or to the internet and being able to monitor things, monitor situations, monitor things mechanically to make sure uh, if I have to do any, you know, any type of predictive maintenance or anything like that. And we never really had the opportunity to have a tool that would kind of address how, how do I how do I place an antenna? How do I understand the field gain and where, where things go in high frequency versus low frequency? We now do. Electromagnetics engineers based upon the CST studio. And so you get different types of applications, as you can see here. Uh, if you're worried about you know human exposure, you're worried about any type of um, electronics cooling. Uh, you're worrying about where the signal goes, electromagnetic interference, electromagnetic compatibility, uh, x-rays, uh, MRI, 5G, everything related to that aspect we now can cover with the electromagnetics engineer uh, on the 3D experience platform or the CST studio suite for a standalone uh, electromagnetics application. So we, we have all your physics covered. And now we want to go ahead and talk about where you can go to get more information. So go ahead and go to the next slide. And here's where you I'll leave this up here for a second. Uh, we have a, a plethora of information out on our uh, out on our website at 3ds.com. <clears throat> you can see we actually have our own industrial equipment section uh, to go along with some other uh, other areas such as high tech and medical. But for industrial equipment, we have this is a this is the repository for your information to understand every aspect of our simulation solution as it relates to industrial equipment. And we also have a community. You can go to the community and uh, talk about things and look at different resources, educational type stuff, have some conversations with people and, and really get a really good feeling that this is a large community. A lot of people use this tool and are really, uh, really engaged in successful design and simulation. And ultimately, uh, TPM, uh, thank you to TPM for uh, sponsoring us today and for uh, putting this all together. If you do have questions, uh, we're going to answer questions in just a second. But if you like what you saw, you want to you know, go deeper dive, learn more. Uh, obviously, Robbie's here on the call as well. He'll, he can answer any questions related to that. But uh, contact uh, TPM, and, they're, and they're, they're more than happy to help you. And with that, let's go ahead and take any questions that may be out there. Again, type them into the uh, questions uh, chat or questions field, and uh, we will be happy to answer any questions. We had a couple that popped up, so while we'll go ahead and answer them, we answered them already for, for folks, but we had a couple pop up, um, and I'll just go ahead. The first question was, is 3D Experience a separate program? Is it is it local or cloud-based? So the answer, yes, it is a separate program. It is, you know, simulation, like I said earlier, next generation, next level. You saw some of that stuff with some of the advanced meshing, some of the advanced dynamics, as well as now adding in electromagnetics and some of the fluid stuff, okay? So it is a, they are separate programs. You saw how they work with SOLIDWORKS. 
Um, is it, and the next part of that was, is it local or cloud-based? The answer is yes, and, and then let me explain that. It is local from a standpoint that you have the option to solve all your simulations in the 3D Experience platform local to your machine. The setup and the post-processing, which is looking at the results, is done on the cloud. The data is stored on the cloud. So it's a little bit of both, but it is mostly, I, I would say it's mostly, it is mostly cloud-based. And can then can I add on real quick to that? Uh, sure, data. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so the three D experience platform is it's 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 basically where everything is hosted, right? So that's entirely all the communication takes place in in the cloud. Uh, but there are applications that sit within uh, the 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 three D experience platform that are completely browser based. So there's a, there's CAD tools that where you just log in and you start doing your CAD operations. Now when it comes to simulation or the Simulia tools are not, you know, they're cloud enabled. So they are still a thick client that you download and install, uh, but the client installed on your machine actually is uh, linked to your 3D experience cloud. Okay, so it constantly communicates and all the data is stored in the cloud, for example, uh, you have the option to uh, run run on the cloud, so it's, so it's a, still a thick client. All the similar Simulia apps, and it just communicates as needed with the 3D Experience platform. Okay, good. Thank you for clearing that up. Um, and then uh, I, I Ramesh, had a question. You might be able to help here. Uh, uh, briefly explain how the PDM side of 3D Experience works. Um, so I guess how? Well, I guess let's pretend that there's simulation data created. How is that? Um, you know, I don't know, in terms of the product data management stuff, I'm not sure about that answer, but Ramesh, I'll kind of let you take a stab at at least how simulation data is handled uh, within the 3D experience platform. So it's all automatic, you know, so that's what we, that's why we call it as hassle-free data management. All your data is automatically, so for example, in, in, in the demo I showed you, you know, I, I was pushing the geometry from SolidWorks desktop through the connector into the 3D Experience platform. So all, so the connector does all the work for you, uh, for us in terms of you know uh, having the you know putting in a certain collaborative space as we call it, which is your working folder. And and so we so bottom line is as a simulation guy, I don't worry about data management. The system, the platform does it automatically for us. Okay, so it's all managed, and and uh, that's why also it's called hassle-free data management. Okay, and additional now this has probably gone our scope um, talking about the actual pro total product data management. Robbie, I don't know if you want to uh, talk about that. Uh, the yeah, I can talk about one. Um, yeah, the, the question was revolving specifically around you know creating and tracking part numbers, bill of materials. Mm. Yes, there there are different roles and applications inside of the platform that handle all that very similar to SOLIDWORKS PDM and there are other tools out there that are uh, more analogous to the uh, Anovia platform that, that are out there so it's a lot of the Anovia tools that are uh, available for SOLIDWORKS users but works you know similar but different it's just, it's data management on the cloud okay mm -hmm. very good um, okay, and uh, we can, uh, we, we uh, Ramesh, I guess we can get, get a copy of the presentation. We can put this in PDF form and share this with uh, with folks. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll, uh, we can definitely share the presentation in the PDF format. Okay, all right, very this, good. This session is also uh, recorded. So this is going to be posted on our blog as well after the fact, and it's going to be on YouTube on our channel. Perfect. Hey, I'm famous, I'll be on YouTube. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. All right, with that, are there any more questions? Um, I will give it a couple seconds. You guys see our email address there, so if you do have something that you think of later, by all means, you you can email myself, Ramesh, or Robbie at TPM, and we're happy to, to help you with, uh, with anything there. And if there aren't any more questions, uh, we finished a few minutes early, which is great. And and uh, on behalf of myself and SolidWorks and Ramesh and Robbie, thank you so much for uh, coming out and learning with us today. And we're here to support you. And thank you again for being SolidWorks customers. And I will tell everyone goodbye. Everyone have a great day. Yeah. Thank have you all. Day. Stay safe. Bye. Bye-bye. Right.